It is summertime tonight, isn't it? Woo, it's hot and muggy out here. Also, we're running a special on gnats tonight. Uh, if you weren't here last time, EquiShield SB does a wonderful job on gnats, really keeps them off you. Um, it's a horse product, but it works on humans too, no problem. A um, couple of housekeeping things. Our next seminar is September 24th, and that will be on botulism. We don't see a ton of it here, but having talked to them about it, it um, uh, it's super interesting information to have for sure. Uh, and then October 19th, Everybody, I want to see your phones out, putting that one in. October 19th is our 11th annual open house. Tons of prizes, tons of giveaways. We'll have Maple Street Biscuit Company here for food. We're working on another one that y'all will be excited about, I promise. And more importantly, we will have Highway, the horse that fell out of the horse trailer on the interstate. He'll be here uh, visiting to say hi. Um, mostly, he'll be here promoting his book <laughs> that he's in, which is called Adventures of the Horse Doctor's Husband, which may or may not have been written by my husband. Um, so if you guys want to come see how Highway's doing, which is amazing, by the way, he's uh, I, the horse is truly incredible. Um, he will be here on October 19th. You can also win a wellness package at our seminar, along with, or at our open house, sorry, along with lots of other great, great, great prizes. So if you're interested, October 19th. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about my least favorite problem. Yeah, and that is summer sores. And if you've ever experienced a summer sore, they're usually this large, gooey sore on your horse in some awful location. We usually see them on faces or legs, and they are a pain in the veterinarian's behind. So, Courtney from Zoetis is here to talk to us. And the reason Courtney from Zoetis is here to talk to us is that Zoetis happens to have two of our mainstays of treatment for this. So we asked her if she could come give a talk about summer sores. Um, at the end, we're going to do a little bit of talking about some other treatments we do, but if you want to prevent them, Zoetis is your company. So without further ado, I'm going to let Courtney talk to us all about their products. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Letcher. You guys, is this too loud? Sorry? Okay. Um, thank you guys all for coming tonight on what I think might be the hottest and most humid evening of the summer. Um, I want to thank Dr. Latcher, Dr. Bergeson, and Dr. Abbott for having me tonight. Um, and it's funny because Dr. Latcher said summer sores are one of her least favorite things, but for me it's one of my favorite things to talk about, um, mostly because I am a Michigan native and I never knew what a summer sore was until I moved to Florida 13 years ago. And, all the horses that I was working with and riding started popping up with these things and I had no idea what they were. Um, so a little background about me, I work for Zoetis, which is um, a pharmaceutical company. We used to be part of Pfizer Animal Health. Before that, we were Fort Dodge. So name has changed a few times, but um, I cover the northern Florida, southern Georgia area and work with veterinarians and horse owners. And so again, thank you guys for coming tonight. So without further ado, we'll get started here. So the agenda for tonight, um, we're going to talk about what some current fly control options we have that you all are using, um, and then flies as a health risk. Um, there are quite a few diseases and things that pop up because of flies, but we're going to be focusing on one of them being summer sores tonight. Um, and then like Dr. Latcher said, we're going to talk about two products that Zoetis has to try to combat these summer sores. And then we'll do a little question and answer with the three doctors afterwards, because they're certainly more of an expert than I am. So first thing, current fly control options. So show of hands, how many of you guys use fly spray, right? Okay, so we all do, we all know, we go out there and if your horse is in the pasture, we spray our horse and 30 seconds later, it's covered with flies, right? Um, I know that there are some options out there that people think work better than others, and, and there certainly are, but overall down here, um, it's really tough to completely keep flies away 100%. So that being said, how many of you guys are satisfied with your fly sprays? What do you use that you think works really well for you guys? Yep. Yep, the concentrates, yeah. That is definitely one that people say seem to work um, or I use Endure on my horses. I feel like it's a little bit more, I don't know, stays on a little bit longer, is more sweat resistant. 
Yeah, okay, very good. On yellow fine? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then do you guys have overhead spray systems in your barn? A couple of you do. Um, what about, has anybody tried a feed through fly control? No? Okay, we'll, we'll get into that. There's a couple options. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And then do you guys, I'm assuming, all use monthly flea and tick products through it all? Yeah. Okay. So I'm certainly not a bug expert, but here are uh, just the dorsal view and the ventral view, view of both the stable fly and a house fly. The stable fly is the one on your left. Um, the house fly is the one on your right. They both look fairly similar, and they perform very similarly, um, but there are some differences between the two types of flies. So when we talk about flies, we're going to talk about the three larval stages that they go through. Uh, and they basically start by their eggs are hatching in a feces pile, um, and then they're going to emerge as the larva, like you see here. And then the final stage molts into this pupa, which you see here. Have you guys all seen these kind of when you're picking your pastures and stalls, that sort of thing? Yeah. So just some really fun facts about flies. Um, some of these numbers are way too big. I don't even know what they are, but 27,000 immature flies per day is what the USDA says a single horse's manure can produce, okay? Um, and then two flies mating in April, which that's not necessarily conducive to Florida because we don't really have a cold breeze here, um, but that number is 191 gazillion, I'm going to say, gazillion, I'm not really sure, offspring by September if all of them lived. Um, eight flies per cubic inch, they would cover the earth 47 feet deep. Um, and then this is really interesting to me. So the migration can occur, but it's usually limited to a quarter mile, and flies fly at the exact speed that a horse walks. Just, just some fun facts. And obviously they transmit diseases. So we all have that horse in our pasture that looks like this, right? You feel like you're doing some sort of good by covering it head to toe and mesh. And then all these products. So um, what else do you guys have that you think is working? We talked about the overhead fly control in the barn, some fly spray, fly sheets. What else do you guys have? Any other tips and tricks that you think work well as far as keeping the flies away? Not really. It's tough. I mean, even if you're picking the manure out of your barns every day, you're still going to see, see them buzzing around. Um, so we talked about the 27,000 flies per day, and a single horse produces about 40 pounds of manure a day. So if they're in a stall, that becomes 50 to 55 pounds of manure and bedding, straw, shaving, pellets, whatever you're using in the stall per day that a horse produces. So going back to the two differences of, of flies, they're obviously very similar. To me, what stands out the most is that the number of eggs that these flies lay in their lifetime. So the house fly 500 eggs, and the stable fly is 800 eggs, and they only live, you know, three to four weeks. So in that short amount of time, less than a month, they're laying a lot of eggs um, in their lifetime. So we're going to move on to flies as a health risk. So show of hands, how many of you guys have heard about some of these things like pigeon fever? Yep, most of you have heard about that. Um, e. coli, yep. Um, VS, which is certainly a problem in certain parts of the country right now, currently. Um, fly bite dermatitis, I feel like probably the majority of you guys have heard about that, less living in Florida, my horse has that. Salmonella, um, streptococcus, which is um, strangles. Okay, also flies can transmit that. And then habridimiasis, which we're going to talk about that. So summer sores. I tried to get some not too graphic images, but I mean, this is a pretty good visualization of um, typical summer sores. Like Dr. Latcher said, she sees them a lot on legs. Um, when I was a technician for an equine vet, like we saw them everywhere. Muzzles, sheaths, terrible places, um, but especially on the legs, like Dr. Latcher said. Here's another one on the neck. That one's pretty gross. So what are summer sores exactly? 
So as Dr. Latcher mentioned, they are chronic non-healing wounds. Um, they progress really rapidly and they have a tendency to enlarge very quickly and get out of hand very fast. So there are two stomach worm species, um, specifically Habernema, and they are the ones that cause the summer sores. And so when we're in a humid climate like tonight, I mean, we're all sitting here sweating even under the fan, that kind of brews um, a really good solution for summer sores to develop here. Um, so when the larva of the Habernema are shed in the feces, the flies then can pick up the larva and then they deposit it in the horses, um, certain areas on the horse. So the mouth, the eyes, the leg, if there's an open wound on it, they can deposit it there. there. Um, and then the inflammatory reaction will result in that summer sore that you saw in those pictures earlier. So Habernema is, is a stomach worm, and so this is just a life cycle of the stomach worm. Um, so like I said, the larva is deposited in areas like the mouth, and if that horse then swallows the larva, it can develop into adult stomach worm in the stomach. Um, and then it's in there for approximately two months, and then it can be shed in the feces, then picked back up by the fly, and just the cycle keeps continuing. Does that make sense? So everybody, did, did you guys all understand or understand that that worm was what's causing the summer sores? Yep. Um, when, it's, it, when the actual stomach worms in the stomach, uh, Dr. Lesher, Dr. Bergeson, the question is, when they're actually in the stomach, do you normally see any problems from stomach worms? Yeah, almost never. So it's not, the stomach worm is not typically a parasite of concern in horses as far as like, tapeworms or insisted small strongyles, that sort of thing. It's more what they can turn into with the habernema. So treatment of summer sores, I'm gonna let the doctors talk a little bit about this at the end because kind of every veterinarian has their different ways about treating an actual summer, summer store when it happens, um, but it's pretty intense as far as managing. How many of you guys have had summer sores on your horses before? A few of you, yeah. So usually there's some topical therapy, some bandaging. Sometimes if they get really bad, um, surgical debridement is also an option, but I'll let them talk about that at the end. So how do we prevent them? We're gonna talk about two products. One of them is Solitude IGR and the other is Quest. Have you guys heard about Solitude IGR? Show of hands, nope, a couple of you, okay. So for Solitude IGR, we're gonna talk about that first. And the horse is the applicator for this product, okay? And I'll explain what that means. <clears throat> Solitude IGR comes in a bucket. They're alfalfa-based pellets, like you see there. It's a really small scoop, it's a half an ounce. And it's the same size scoop for every horse. So it doesn't matter if it's uh, you know a pony that weighs 500 pounds or a draft horse that weighs 2,000, they're still all gonna get that same um, scoop size. So it's very safe, regardless of how old they are, what breed they are, what size they are, and they all get the same amount. And the way it works is it works on chitin. Have any of you guys heard chitin? That's the C-H-I-T-I-N term. Um, it's on the next slide, but that's like the exoskeleton of the bug. So like when you step on a cockroach and you hear that crunch, that is the chitin. So that's the chitin, that's the outside protective covering of an insect. Um, so the way the solitude works is it, it, it inhibits the production of chitin for these, um, for these flies. So basically if they don't produce their outside shell, they can't survive. So it just ends up killing the fly. Um, so it, it's not a pesticide. Um, it has been using, we've been using it for over 15 years in horses and even longer than that in poultry. Um, and so it does not work inside the horse. So the, like we said, the horse is the carrier for it. So it works once the horse passes the manure and this, this product is actually working in the feces. <clears throat> um, so it also has no effect on the current adult flies. It's just basically working on the larva, making sure that that chitin does not get produced. Does that make sense? So here's the larva, so the, um, the solitude interferes with, with the chitin. So that means, like I said, the exos exoskeleton cannot completely form, therefore the adult fly dies off. Something else some people ask me if it has any um, effect on dung beetles, and the answer to that is no. It's just on the flies. 
So here's our fly life cycle. Like we said earlier, they usually live three to four weeks, some a little bit longer, but the eggs are hatching very quickly in six to 24 hours. And then the larva is four to 10 days after that. And then with the solitude IGR, the life cycle of the fly can't get any farther. That adult fly and that pupa cannot develop. Um, so as far as efficacy, um, we've done a couple of studies. Um, one looked right after um, the horse was on the product in the fresh manure. And then the other study looked at the manure 14 days later once the horse was on it. And um, both studies had 99.5 to 100% efficacy, efficacy in those horses as far as um, no fly development. Um, a couple things to note about this product. So every horse on the farm needs to be on it, okay? So like if you have a six stall barn and this half of the horses are not on it and this half are, it's not gonna do you any good because some of the flies are still gonna be able to be produced in some of the manure. So every horse on your property needs to be on it. Um, I live down in Ocala and I've got a three acre farm here and a three acre farm next to me and a three acre farm here and cattle behind me, um, and this product definitely works. But when I noticed the huge difference was when my neighbor next door also put her two horses on it, and the flies basically were eliminated. But when you're really close like that, you need to make sure as many horses surrounding you are on the product as well. And definitely all the horses in a barn or definitely all the horses on your, on your property. Um, oh, also, so two weeks is usually the time frame where, you're, where you will start noticing that fly life cycle get cut. Um, and then usually four to six weeks is when you'll notice a complete decrease in your flies. Um, for those of you who do USAF events and are concerned about drug testing, the product is not drug test. And it's also safe in pregnant mares and stallions, which I know is a concern for some of you who may be doing some repro work. And this calendar is kind of funny to me because while well, where we are in the green, it says February to December. So it's basically saying you can do it 11 months out of the year. Honestly, most people down here will do it for the whole year. Um, sometimes we get some 30 degree days in January and maybe the flies will go away naturally, but most people in Florida who use this product are on it year round for sure. We don't have the luxury of the blue states who only have to be on it for half the year. So typical expenses, how much does this product cost compared to your other options? Um, like I said, I use Endure, which is probably one of the more expensive um, products on the market. I know Piranha is also up there, um, Bite Free Spray. Um, those could be anywhere from 40 cents a day to a dollar a day. And then um, like the Repel X and the Buzz Off also 40 to 80 cents per day when you break down the cost of your bottle and how many times you're need needing to uh, um, reapply. And then with the solitude, this is what the buckets look like. So there's a large bucket, the 20 pound bucket, and then the six pound pail. Um, the six pound pail is gonna last one horse six months. Um, two, obviously two horses, three months, but those are the two different sizes that the product comes in. And when you break it down per day for this product, um, it's about even with some fly sprays and it's actually cheaper than some of um, the, the products like um, Endure and Piranha. So anywhere between 41 to 47 cents per day. Obviously that price goes up a little bit depending on where you're purchasing it from and that sort of thing. But just to show you a comparison of this product com compared to fly sprays. Anybody have questions on solitude? Yes. Her question was, if you're using solitude, do you need to use fly spray? And the answer is no. You should see a complete reduction of flies. Like I said, my personal horses that have some horses nearby, there's a reduction, but not 100%. But in a perfect world, like if you're on a farm like this and you, can't, you don't have neighbor horses and every horse is on here, you will not see very many flies at all, at all. Usually, yeah, so usually within those two weeks, you're gonna start seeing a gradual decline in your fly population, so you'll probably, it's not gonna be an instant thing, but once from you get to that two week, to the four week, to the six week, six weeks is when you'll definitely, you should see virtually no flies. So 
other words, go to the farm. Yeah, I mean, depending on how, how close nearby, because the flies can travel, so they can travel up to a quarter mile. So even if the horse, the question was if the horse is in their individual pasture, do the other horses need to be on as well? And yes, I mean, the answer, unless they're separated by a quarter mile, the other ones should be on it as well. Yeah, good question though. Any other? Can you feed the cows? So we were actually talking about that earlier. Um, Dr. Latcher might have a little bit more information, but this product was originally developed for cattle um, and it does not work very well on cattle. And we we're, were having that discussion when I first came in. I think it's the horn fly that cattle get that this product does not work. I'm pretty sure it's the horn fly. So I think if you fed it to cattle, there might be some reduction in some of the flies, but I know that it, it, it does not work on cattle like it does on horses. It's a good question though. And that's another thing. Um, if you have horses housed with cattle, or even if you have a field of cattle behind your horses, it's not going to be 100%. You will see a reduction, but with the cattle really close nearby, and that's a tough, that's a tough thing for a lot of places around here because we have a lot of horses commingled with cattle, or have cattle really close by, or have a lot of small farms on top of each other. Yeah, good question. Anybody else? Yep, so our question is where can you get this product? Um, you can buy it from here, from Spring Hill Equine. Yep, so definitely talk to, to the doctors afterwards, but yeah, you can order that, order it from them. Yep. Okay, good questions. Um, so we're gonna move on to the second part of preventing summer sores, and that's Quest. How many of you guys have used Quest gel on your horses as a dewormer? Good. Very good. But something I want to know, um, so this new package, some of you guys may have not seen this new package. Um, the old Quest had a little bit different graphic, but when you start seeing this new package, it's kind of in big letters on the front, but it does treat a larger size horse. It's 1,500 pounds, just something to be aware of um, if you start seeing this new packaging, which most of you guys should by now. So Quest and Quest Plus, the active ingredient is moxidectin. The Quest Plus, the only difference between the Quest and the Quest Plus, Quest Plus also has praziquantil in it, which that is a controlling tapeworm. But um, the active ingredient, moxidectin, is going to control stomach worms, okay? So that's what we, what we talked about, is how the habernema is from the stomach worm. So this product, given orally, will control stomach worms. Um, we did do a study where there was 18 to 49 horses that were infected with habernema. Um, they were dewormed with Quest, and within two weeks, there was a reduction of that. So we know that maxidectin certainly works on stomach worms. Um, and we'll have Dr. Um, Latcher talk a little bit more about how she uses this in her protocols. Um, but it basically will eliminate the eggs shedding back into their manure, and then starting that whole cycle of the stomach um, worm like we saw. So what sorts of other questions do you have, either on Quest, or maybe we can bring Dr. Bergeson up here, Dr. Latcher, Dr. Abbott, for technical questions, if you guys have some. I also want them to talk a little bit about what they use topically once you actually have a summer sore and how they both best treat that. start with a drawing. This is the most fun. Thank you very much for Thank you, Courtney. Yes, thank you for the best. Okay. Oh, you can immediately read your name on the back, but I'm going to read the number. That's more fun. No, we don't have numbers. Okay. Well, I'll just read the name. Mary Harris. There you go. Congratulations. Okay, so um, our treatment for summer sores kind of depends a lot on the severity, but um, you know, if we were seeing a summer sore like this for the first time, uh, we're definitely going to tell you number one, you need to deworm with Quest like right now. Um, 
we try to reserve Quest because that's our, our big gun, our best, our strongest dewormer that's out there on the market right now. We reserve it for these summer sore cases because we want it to work in these summer sore cases because nothing else does. So we're definitely going to tell you to deworm with Quest. Um, sometimes if that alone doesn't work, uh, we end up having to do a local injection of ivermectin um, to kill the worms at the site. Um, and that's usually just because the summer sore is in a location that doesn't have a lot of good blood flow. So it's not getting the benefit of the quest taken up into their system. So um, it's a combination treatment of that. Um, if they're located on a limb or somewhere that we can wrap, we're definitely going to have you cover them up. Um, and it's also a good reason if you have any kind of wound on your horse somewhere that you can wrap to bandage it right away so that those flies don't have a chance to deposit eggs in that wound. So. I'd say our, the biggest things we do are covering it up, treating with Quest, sometimes treating, injecting it with ivermectin to kill the parasites. Um, and then, like Courtney said, the real problem is the over-inflammatory response, over-response of the horse to the larvae. So another thing that we'll sometimes do is put these horses on an immunosuppressant, like a steroid, um, to take down that immune response. So that's kind of our go-to treatment for for summer sores, but um, you know, Quest is one thing that we we never skip in these cases. And we did have a we had a farm last year where we were having a, a really tough time with the summer sores, and we were doing all the things, but we just couldn't get flies under control. Oh, there's, there's an Amber Alert, everybody! Please stand by. Um, so we, we just couldn't get them under control no matter what we were doing. We were using a lot of steroids on these horses, trying to keep them happy. Um, and we brought in Solitude this year, and we've been able to massively cut down on our summer sores. So Solitude, uh, you know, for a lot of us, we have one and two horses, and it's not necessarily something where the manure gets away from us and we have the big fly issues. But when we do have those issues, Solitude is a lifesaver for us. It's, it's been a really great product. Um, I've used it at my house and had good luck with it. And I, I will tell you that I feel like it's a safe product for the horses and the environment, and that's a big deal for me. But it is safe for both of those. those. So um, that's where we've used Solitude. And like to, like uh, Dr. Ferguson said, Quest is, Quest is, that's the summer sword of Quest. <laughs> that's how we use that. So. Um, Oh, Dr. Abbott is going to talk about her favorite topic, eyes, and the fun of summer sores in eyes. Maybe. Okay. So, you guys hear me? Okay. So, um, you may notice also that this time of year, your horses are having a lot of discharge from their eyes. They're, it's 99% of the time, it's clear discharge. It's not really a big deal, but the flies love it. And they will deposit that habernema in the eyes. So if we come out, we see your horse, we see these little yellow granules kind of buried in the conjunctiva of their, of their eye, it becomes a bigger process. Again, we're gonna tell you to deworm with Quest. That's gonna be the first line uh, treatment. And then we're also going to probably start your horse on a topical eye ointment that has some steroids in it to reduce the inflammation. We're also probably going to have to come in at some point in time and dig those granules out of the conjunctiva because they just love it in there and they do not come out without us, you know, taking that time and pulling them out. Unfortunately, they don't always come out and we have to go back and do it again. And we definitely treated those multiple times on multiple horses. My personal horse has one right now that I'm dealing with. Um, and then the other kind of, uh, what's the word, sequelae to that is that their tear ducts can get super inflamed as well and then get clogged, so we may end up even having to flush their tear ducts with some saline and steroid and everything to help reduce the inflammation. Anybody have any other questions about the fun of summer sores? Yes. So the question is, do we recommend Quest in our normal deworming rotation? And we do not. We actually, Quest is one of the most effective dewormers we have. We still have an Amber Alert? Yeah. Uh, and so we actually reserve that big gun 
Um, so we reserve it for horses that we think we absolutely need it on, and we reserve it for our summer store horses. And uh, one of the things about summer stores is that their horses are often repeat offenders, right? So the horse who has it this year will often have it next year. And so in those horses, we start using it prophylactically. So in May, as the, the flies ramp up and the hot, humid weather ramps up that extra little bit, um, we go ahead and deworm those horses with Quest at that time. Now we're losing efficacy on our moxidectin as well. Uh, it used to be that when this product came out, it was 16 weeks before we saw eggs, and I think it's down to eight, eight to 10. Um, so that's why. We, we absolutely love this product and we want it to work for as long as possible so we don't use it on anyone else. And like, occasionally we use it on someone else, but we, we, we like to say on Quest, it's the one that you have to hear from us that you gotta get it. So, anybody else have questions? And we'll be around. We're not going anywhere. So if you have, yes. What about What about fun? What about fungus, the joy of fungus? Um, and we talked a lot about this in our last seminar, which is also on, on YouTube, but um, we love the EquaShield products. It's a combination chlorhexidine ketoconazole shampoo, salve, spray. Am I missing anything? No, yeah. <laughs> they have it in any way you want to put it on. Um, but that has really helped us a lot with the funguses. The one fungus that we will sometimes see that we're always concerned when we see a habernema on the lower leg is something called pythium. You do not want your horse to have pythium. But when we see a big summer sore on the lower leg, we're going to come out and really dig into that. There's some things that pythium looks different. Um, it is an incredibly aggressive Florida sort of fungus, sort of bacteria. It's in this weird category all by itself. I'm pretty sure it's alien technology myself. But um, so if we have a big one in particular on a leg, we're gonna come dig. And if we see those yellow granules, that's fine. If we see something that looks like coral, you're gonna see our faces go white and we're gonna have a very serious discussion with you about that one. And Pythium comes from, and last week was a great condition for this, but that standing kind of nasty water that we get after it rains and we've got those, those shallow kind of, they're not really ponds, but you know, we've got those shallow big puddles and the horses end up in the edges of those and that's where Pythium loves to live. And it's a bad, bad dude. So that's the other reason that we say, if you guys see a summer shore, you know, we, we need to see them and decide what we got going on. So preventing the like the rain rot type funguses and the legs and all that, we for the EquaShield products and this is why we recommend them because trust me I've used every over the counter whatever it is Head and Shoulders, you know special concoction from Grandma I've done it I promise. Um, the EquaShield products are pH balanced for horse skin, and the quantities of chlorhexidine and ketoconazole are appropriate for horses, versus a lot of the other products on the market are made for either humans or dogs. And so in order to get enough of the antifungal and antibacterial onto a horse, you need to use an entire bottle versus, like I said, the EquaShield products are for horses. So, you know, a, a small dollop in your palm is enough of it for these guys. Like, it's also a pH balance for horse skin. And so it doesn't strip the oils like some of the other products can. Um, and we do find, you know, in weather like last week, <laughs> Lord help us. All right, man. You're, you're on sort of survival mode at that point. Um, but usually on the bad ones, about once a week will get us through. But it, in three days of solid rain, it, it's just managing it afterwards, honestly. And there's another question somewhere. Oh, you forgot it or I answered it. I answered it. I'm going to go with that. I, that's a, the question is, is that okay for organic, right? Like to be certified organic? And I don't know the answer to that. I think we would probably have to 
I will have to look that one up because I I don't know the answer to that one. I yeah, I can't even guess. Because it definitely it decays to straight nitrogen, but you know, some things are okay for organic, but sometimes I'm like, Whoop! and some things aren't. So but we'll find out for you. Oh, yeah, the other thing that we do for so uh, treatment, you guys have heard us talk about these before, and uh, Dr. Ferguson was talking about bandaging legs, socks for horses, just another plug, socks for horses, everyone should have some. If you need some, let us know. <laughs> we'll show them to you, and we'll tell you how to order them. And we, I think we have a few in Paris here. Right we have them here right now. So, like I said, if you guys have any questions, we'll be here for you. Courtney will be here for you. Um, Justin will be here for you, so you can pre-order your book. Uh, and come see Highway on October 19th. Thank you guys so much. <laughs>